What's going on you guys? What's going on? So it's currently the next day. Uh got a busy day. I had it was just 10 a.m. And I was like, you know what? I got some game I want to get to them. So obviously you guys already know since it's Sunday. In this video, y'all are gonna receive the Sunday breakdown analysis, but I'm gonna switch it up for today. Really, this probably like will be rare that I do something like this, or maybe every now and then, maybe I'll drop like a like a random video that I released to my academy just to give y'all like some free sauce too. But like I got hella gems that's already recorded in my YouTube section and stuff that I could release to the public, but we'll see how I feel about that. So what I'm gonna do today specifically, um I'm gonna give y'all a breakdown. We're gonna do a full breakdown on I need to decide what pair I'm gonna do. Like why's my monitor over here tripping. I need to decide which pair I'm gonna do. It's probably gonna be let's do one I actually never done on the channel yet. Let's do NAS one hundred. So I'm gonna go full in detail, a full breakdown on NAS one hundred. I'm going over basically like overall how it's been moving, how you can trade it, how it's been for this whole year in general, what am I what is my predictions for next year as we go into twenty twenty four, like everything the whole nine about NAS one hundred. Let's really go like full throttle and just give y'all some game. On how to trade it. So, without further ado, and actually, you know what? That's gonna be the free, the free trade setup that I give you today too. So usually I do SPS and US thirty. That was the ones for the last two weeks. But this week is gonna be NAS one hundred, and then next week is probably gonna be Germany forty. Cause why not? Uh, obviously, this week probably will be a little bit slower. Cause as you guys know, it's Thanksgiving. So if it's holidays, the markets probably won't be busting as much um, as we start to get to Thursday. But then again, on Friday. Wednesday, anywhere between Monday through Wednesday should be smooth. And then Friday, I don't really trade on Fridays, but Fridays could be another day where the market's actually going crazy because it is going to be Black Friday. Everybody's going to be spending a lot of money in the market. So it's going to be cool. We're going to see. We're going to see how it's looking. So without further ado, let's get into this breakdown. I know the video is probably already at like 30 something minutes, but the, the real game, the real sauce is about to happen right now. So I'll catch y'all on the charts. All right, what's going on, you guys? Let's get straight into it. So actually, just off rip, this was originally one of the sales setups I was looking for last Friday for NAS 100. As you guys can see, TP1 did smash once it finally broke below that zone. But then, as you also can see, TP1 ended up becoming a support level, which was our indication to let us know that it was time to start looking for those buy reversals back to the upside. But we're not here for that right now. We are, but we're not. So let's actually talk about it. Four hour day chart. I like to go to the higher time frame when I'm talking about like the overall big picture. Because at the end of the day, the overall big picture tell you exactly what type of move that you need to be looking for in the market overall. That is gem number one I'm giving y'all. <clears throat> Always go to the higher time frames to see the bigger pictures. Uh when I'm trading like on a day-to-day -day basis, I literally check four hour and maybe one hour, but really, I'm really on a four hour for, to figure out where's my main support levels, where's my main resistance levels, where are my higher highs, where are my higher lows, where are my lower highs, and where are my lower lows in the market at, right? Once I identify these areas, now I can drop down to the one hour. Now I can drop down to 30 minute, 15, five minute time frame and see, okay, where's the market at currently and how close is it to retesting back to the previous main support levels that I know makes the market move. See, a lot of times people trade and they might just have a support resistance based off of the five minute or the 15 minute time frame and not understanding like actually at the end of the day, that's cool too. Because if you're a scalper, that works for you, right? If you understand on the scalper level, if I drop down to the five minute on a scalper level and I say, okay, cool. I clearly see every time I came to this price right here, it bounced off the support, right? Every time I came to this top right here, it bounced off the resistance, right? So if I clearly understand that, then I know how I could trade it, but I also understand what the moment breaks out that level on a five minute time frame. That's the way I know when it's time to actually go for the move. And it's trading is so beautiful because there are there's literally a thousand of different strategies. There's thousands of different ways you can make the market move. Like there's no there's not only just one trading strategy that works, that's like the holy grail of all trading strategies. Now, like yes, it might be a favorite that you might have, but understand that. When I think about all the strategies I teach, when I think about all the strategies that other people te teach in the community and stuff, at the end of the day, if you really compare analysis or if you really compare strategies, you will notice people indications to enter the market are very similar to other people's indications. Or like we may look like, okay, 
what's a good analogy right here that I could use? What is a good example? Like we might see like one person might say, I use the moving averages to trade or I use the Fibonacci's to trade. Another person might say, all I use to trade is a line. I use my trend line. Both strategies tell you they confirmations to when you want to enter the market, right? So me, the way I trade, I use price action. My price action and zone breakout strategy is, okay, I'm at key support level. I'm entering off of that or I'm waiting for the breakout. Now, not realizing, me waiting for the breakout is literally the same concept for the zone breakout that I use. That's literally the same principle of the trend line strategy, right? You find a trend that the market is going inside. Once the market actually breaks that trend line structure, now you have an indication that the market is getting ready to go for versus. That same concept. For me, I understand with the zone breakout method, cool, I wanted to break out the top before I actually enter my main buys. But if I want to use the trend line, I could take a, a nice buy entry right here back to the top of the zone. And then I know if it doesn't break out the top of the zone, then I can start looking for sales. And then if it does, I can look for my buys. As you can see, Fake breakout, came back down, take sales, support, take buys, resistance back to sales, and vice versa until it actually shows you a pattern, right? But we're not here for all that. That was just a start. I got to make sure I stay on track and don't get caught in me and my moments where I just get the getting on subject. But when we talk about the higher time frame, right? So I, like you said, like I just realized like there's different strategies that you use in the market, right? When we talk about the higher time frame, NAS, let's really just do a recap of this year. And of course, I'm doing this because we like we in the year we're getting ready to get into December. Like the market has been going crazy. 2023, right? This is where price was at. In 2023, this is where the support level is at. And first of all, shout out to the swing traders that held this position. Like that's insane. So at the beginning of 2023, this is where the market was at. We thought we were seeing pullbacks in the market. Ultimately, like that's cool and all, right? But the overall trend in the market was what? Hit that support level. Overall trend in the market, long term wise, was a strong dog uptrend. On NAS 100 specific, other ones too, but NAS was really on a strong uptrend. And even now you're seeing it started to try to like act like it was going for sales, right? It started a strong downtrend push that it was doing. Excuse me, it started showing signs of reversals, right? And we might see this week, we might see some sell offs again, right? And that's kind of going to be what I talk about a little bit later on. But overall, like, bro, since the beginning of 2023, Nas overall was an uptrend. So when you're looking at this on a higher time frame as a trader, if I clearly see, okay, like by March or by May, I'm realizing, hey, this pair has really been moving in a strong uptrend market. Let me show you how high, simple. Trading becomes at this point. If I understand, and I can just go solely off of how I trade with zone breakouts, and this is like free game I'm giving you up to actually teach this strategy. I ain't gonna teach you the full strategy, but the same concept applies because the same thing as price action. Like if you used to draw, we can go back to let's rewind this. So let's say I understand that okay, this is support level back all the way back in what day this is. This is back in January, beginning of the year. March, February, I'm starting to see the market pull back. I'm like, cool, either I need to retest back to here. Ironically, the same errors, right? So retest back to here for my buys, or as long as price doesn't close back below this zone right here, I can look for buys. And once it respects that level, I know I can look for buys. So as you can see, fake breakout, took off for buys. Now, as we start to get later on in the year, we get in May, June, July, um, we're in the second quarter, third quarter by this time. You're constantly seeing what is happening in the market. Strong uptrend momentum. So let me talk to you about how, how does this make trading 10 times more simpler when you realize what is the trend in the market. When we on a day chart time frame, I told you I missed a picture very clear, right? Obviously, a lot of y'all don't trade on the day time chart frame, time frame. And I'm not saying like you got to trade on it. I'm saying look at the day chart to show you what is the real trend, that, what is the bigger picture that I need to be looking for. Yes, I could trade on a day to day, the four hour, the one hour, and see that there's still always going to be opportunities to catch sales. It might be a bearish day this day. It might be a buyer's day this day, right? But you have to understand where you are in the market. Where's the overall trend? Where will be the main pullback that you can start looking for on a higher time frame? So that way it can paint you the bigger picture. Now, I realized this, right? I realized this, and this, and this part of what I'm talking about right now, I realized this around, I want to say, I think it was like, July, no, it wasn't July. It was earlier than that. It had to been like June, July. I started realizing the importance 
and trading on like the four hour and a day chart time frame. Not even just on NAS 100, but as you guys know, like, I like trading US 30. I trade all the indices anyway, but US 30, uh, Germany 40, those pair in particular, so I was really focusing on that day chart time frame, especially with one of my strategies that I use, uh, the moving average strategy that I use in particular for uh, these periods. Now, when I say I use moving average strategy, understand, I'm not, I'm not going to give you all like my specific parameters, but at the end of the day, there are thousands of parameters that are out there that you can use. Um, so if you might be like, oh, I can't remember you mad at me. Like, bro, why are you just telling them the sauce? I told them, like, I'm giving them the sauce because, like, at the end of the day, we all going to win, right? Regardless, helping people in the YouTube community isn't going to stop you all from making y'all money and helping them make money is the same thing, right? But the thing is, I only gave them half the sauce. Half of the sauce is I use on moving average indicators, but the other sauce is the specific parameters that I actually have mine set to. Because everybody moving average doesn't cross at the same time. You have to actually have it set to certain parameters in particular to understand how the market moves. But that is one of the indicators that I do use. But when I'm looking on higher time frames, but that isn't the only actual indication that I use to actually enter the market on the day-to-day -day basis. When y'all saw like my last video when we had the 80K day, right? That wasn't uh based off it helped confirmation, but that wasn't why I entered that. Predominantly, I would say I'm more of a price action type of trader because it makes trading 10 times simpler. Like you can ask any of my mentees or like when you, my people that's in a live trading room, they, they could tell you like, when we trading in the live trading room, all I'm doing is this. I got my zone, I have my range. It comes to support, I'm looking for buys. It comes to resistance, I'm looking for sales. For breakout, I'm looking for buys. For breakdown below, I'm looking for sales. Keep it as simple as possible. The more you keep your trade simple, the more everything will flow. Everything will be natural when it comes to it, right? So in this case, like I was saying, if I understand the higher time frame, overall, NAS has been going in the uptrend. Like, let's say we're in June, July, August, right? And we're seeing like, dang, like this pair has really been buying since the beginning of the year. Where's the area that this pair can come back to for me to enter for like a swing trade buy or like where I can get into a position where I can anticipate to hold to the end of the year as well? And for me, if you remember, if you know, you know, maybe I'll put a, I'll actually, ooh. Ah, I pray I still, I got that clip. Yes, yes, yes. I still got the video. I'm going to put a clip. I'm going to put my NAS 100 video clip for my people that don't know, uh, for my new people that's here on YouTube. In August, was it August? I honestly forgot. One of those months, I'm talking about one of those months. Let me see. Let's see. August, yep, it was in August. August 11, your boy went skydiving. Or was it like August 9th? It was like the 9th or the 10th, I went on skydiving. In my skydiving video, I talked about how I'm trying to decide on which camera I want to talk to right now. But I talked about how, um, hey, NAS 100 is at a key support level on a four-hour time frame, right? You can go back and find it in the video when I talked about it. I said NAS, NAS 100 is approaching a key four-hour support level that we haven't seen it touch since June. When it comes back to this support level, I'm going to be looking for buy opportunities off of this level, and you guys can look to swing it back to the top of the zone for the continuation of the uptrend because we have been in a strong uptrend. A, make sure you enter that clip right after this video showing that. Right? Now it's 100. The Nasdaq. Yeah. It's coming on a, a major, coming up on a major support on a four hour and a day chart time frame. That's all I'm going to say. We do show them the information. Pay attention when you get to 14. Pay attention if it gets to 14730. If it gets to 14730, that's all you got to look out for. That'll probably be like my buy in area. That's what I'm telling you. So, you do what you want with that information. So, as you guys saw in the previous clip, that's I literally, I literally broke down the analysis. Like, hey, the four-hour setup is coming. I mean, not four-hour day chart. Four-hour setup is coming. Swing trade opportunity. Like, literally, price hasn't been here since June. We're back here in August now. What do you think is going to happen when the market can? And sure enough, what happened? The market with that entry took off for the heavy buys. And then, as you guys can see, when it played out. It literally took off for how many pips is this? From here, I don't remember the exact entry, but in the video, you would know what was the exact entry that I said. Actually, hold on. Because I know I posted it on my Instagram as well. Let's see if I can find it, but yep. I posted on August 22nd about this. It was, uh, it was for 2,500 pips. Let's see. One four seven thirty. That's what I said in the video. 
I said, pay attention to what happens to Nas 100 when it gets to 14730. That was the sniper. Like, bro, it don't get no better than that. I gave y'all a super sniper entry. Pay attention to what happens to Nas 100 when it gets to 14730. Right? Right here. What happened when it came to 14730? Price pushed down. Snapped back to 14730. Took off a strong buy. It's floating 2,500 pips in profit. I remember this because that's when I posted on Instagram on August 22nd that the price was shooting for uh, uh, 2,500 pips. So as you can see here, it took off for a full 7,000. Now, this might be 700, depending on what broker you use, but the broker I used it was 7,000 pips at the time. Now, 700 pips is still a lot of pips to catch in the market. Now, that's not it, though. Because look, this is the crazy thing. It took off for the bounce of 700 pips. So let's say it was 700 pips. Came back to a, a sniper retest of resistance. So let's say you didn't even catch these sales, but you already understood the moment the market came right back to that same price, you taking that same buy opportunity again at 14730. And now you can look to swing it back to the other side for a thousand pips, right? This is a thousand pips on some brokers, 10,000 pips on my broker. You feel me? So like, like that's insane, right? Like that's very insane. So as I continue to run play on this, and it's crazy, I think, did it eventually, obviously we know it broke out of it and that was just a change of direction, but let's go back. I want to make sure I'm still staying on track. So I'm showing y'all this to show y'all like the higher time frame tells you the bigger picture right higher highs and higher lows like honestly maybe i'm you know what that might be a video i might release because that's one of my favorite videos ever that i ever done in my academy if you're in my academy session i highly advise you go and watch that video but i feel like that's a major jump maybe i'll probably drop that video on christmas that would be my christmas release that would be my christmas video that would be my gift to y'all for christmas christmas hold me to that somebody remind me on christmas december 25th Hey, drop that higher line, higher about higher high and higher low video because that video is hard. But as you can start to see here, what what started happening in the market? We was in a strong uptrend. Now the market is slowly doing what? Higher time frame tells the bigger picture. Where's my arrow? The market is slowly starting to come down now on a higher time frame. It's starting to create lower highs in the market, creating a downtrend momentum push into what we're seeing currently on the charts right now. Now. Now, you feel me? Now we're in an area, and it's I'm glad this this actually I didn't I promise you I didn't even plan this out how I was gonna talk through this. It was just this is straight out the dawn. So now we're in an area where um and this trend line analysis, I could, this is a whole other strategy I could break y'all down on too. But now we're back at the same area that started the sales back in July. Right now we're back at the same area that started the sales back in July. I was anticipating it's crazy. This all last week, and this is how I know I've grown and matured in my trading uh, throughout this this year in general. It's been so many times in the year, this year, where I was so eager. Like, I I can admit, some traders, um, if you haven't found this out about yourself, you have to understand what type of trader you are. Are you a better buyer in the market or are you a better seller in the market? If you understand what type of trader you are, it kind of makes your trades go more smoother and you can understand what you basically need to work on to sharpen your skill. Like, I understand I'm a better buyer in the market, but I've been working on how can I develop on becoming a better seller? Now, I use special indications for that, but I also anticipate uh, different things in the market now that allows me to understand when it's actually time to look for reversals. I don't just enter sales just off of when it's hitting major resistance levels. I used to. Well, let me rephrase that. I enter sales off of major resistance levels because I understand that market respects price. I catch a quick, a quick 1,200 pips, a quick 1,500 pips, but I understand that, that the move the real swing trade move that I'm looking for might not be ready just yet. And I might have to be just a little bit patient because I know when that move come, the market is going to tank. Even though I am a better seller, I mean, even though I am a better buyer than I am seller, I understand that when those sales come, those sales like fall. Like you can see when the market really hit the uh, resistance or a nice retest back to the sell area, it really tanks how it's supposed to. This week in particular, I had the opportunity to really, I was really testing the markets where we have strong uptrend bars, right? Like areas that the market, I would have looked for sales at were areas that it did exactly what it's supposed to do, right? So let me delete this zone real quick and show y'all. <laughs> um, This week was, what's today's date? Today is the 19th, so that mean it was from, wait, is this week? Is the market not played out all the way? Oh. Yeah, no, it wasn't played out of us. So let me actually get into, I'm tripping. I'm, I'm so bugging. So the 19th is this week, bro. So all the way through here. Okay, so here we're seeing what 
We're in a zone. At the time before I get to this area, like all up here, this is all I see. Major resistance level is right here. Cool. I can see you selling off at this point. I have my fibs on, I have my indications, different indications. I understand that. Like, cool. You can push. I can see you selling off at this level. I know the next furthest level you probably can come is here. And I also understand that there's some wicks right here. Right. So with me understanding this, it allowed me to be patient in the market. Like it was times I was looking for sales, right? Anticipating, okay, my push here, it didn't start once to come back inside the zone. We look for sales. But then once we clearly saw that the momentum was going, like this kind of great hunt Tuesday was crazy, bro. This was the day where I, I was asleep and I woke up like dummy and profit because I entered at six o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, uh during my London session. Like that was crazy. So here we seeing what happened. It wanted to go, I told you this earlier in the video, it wanted to go back to the nearest what major resistance level on a higher time frame. So market did a dramatic push for the buys. Everybody that had pending orders and sell limits and all this right here, all got whipped and stop loss because you got faked out. The market was chilling and moving slow, having people assuming, this is why I never gamble, this is why I never guess. When it comes to trading, so I wait for the market to really show me momentum and I wait for the market to really show me what does it look like when it's actually time to like really go. So like, if you see that this is clearly a zone that's going on in the market, I don't care. I don't care that, and I don't know if I released that video yet, but I don't care that I didn't, but this gives me an opportunity to make this video right now again, because the video that I had before was a little trash. I didn't like how it looked. I don't care. I've matured enough in my trading. Hear me when I say this. I, I've matured enough in my trading that I understand that just because I finally woke up and got my day started and really hopped on the charts does not mean that the market is actually ready for me to actually enter into the trade. Just because you decide to wake up, you wake up as New York session. You saw all throughout the night, the market was consolidating, but all of a sudden, just because you woke up and it's getting close to the morning time, just because you decided that you want to enter, enter the trade, you think the market is going to finally just be ready just because you want to be ready? No, it don't work like that. So continue to be patient. Continue to wait for the market to actually show you. Like as bad as they wanted to consolidate, once it showed you that it was consolidating, I wouldn't have been mad at this buy entry right here back to the top of the zone. But in this case, once it came back to the top of the zone right here, it started so what happened? It started slowing down, started consolidating. We started getting into London session. People probably thought it was a safe bet to sell, right? I probably called a sell right here, but it most likely either one, smack my TP1, or two, I had a trailing stop loss at break even. So that way, even if it came back to this level, I knew it was time for me to get out and look for buys. You know what's great about this right here? And I told my uh chat this, my uh person who teased this. Pay attention to what the market's showing you. This was a support level because it gave you a double bottom setup right here. This is a W in the market, which is an indication that the market is going for buys. And the sweet thing behind this is this indication happened right before the news release. News release at 8 30, that's what caused the market to take off the buys. But at the end of the day, the technical analysis was already there. The technical analysis already painted the picture that you need to look for buys in the market before the news even came out. And I believe the news probably came out negative, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I don't even think the news came out positive for real. And that's what the market be doing sometime too. That's a whole other video I can get into another day. So after the market pushed back up to the highest point in the market, the highest retail that it's been since the uh, beginning of 2020, not the beginning, since 2023, this is the highest point in the market. So what do you think people did when they got to the other end? What do you think I did when it got to the level right here? I sold. <laughs> no cap. I sold. And I think I think it had to been the day before, I want to say, where, what day is this? One of them days, once the market pushed out, it was just moving slow. And I was like, bro, I'm not even trading. I got my pits for the day and I dipped. I think it was Thursday. It had to been, it was Thursday. Thursday was just such a choppy day in the market. I know it's probably hella people confused on what the market was doing. They wanted to hold their sales, all these things to hold on. Like literally like Thursday, I was able to scout the buys. I was able to scout the sales. After that, I was like, I'm out. I'm not touching you no more until you actually really show me like what's really going on. Once you actually break the zone, I'm going to get in there. But until then, I don't want no smoke because you're just chilling and consolidating. Right? So after this last push right here, this is an OP entry. This is the highest point in the market. You got your full retest. So what am I waiting for now? Going into this week, now we're getting to the free setup that I'm giving y'all for today, right? So now, as we go into this week, two things. What should we be seeing, man? Like 2023, we was in a strong downtrend, and then it bounced off support. Then it took off a buys. 
So what are we looking for in 2024? Is it time for us to look for sales? And not necessarily saying that the sales happen right now, but I'm saying, is there a chance that we might see a full retest back to where the price was at in 2021? This is the highest point NAS has ever been, right? After COVID, after 2020, it recovered fully in 2021. It then sold off in 2022. We got holidays coming up. The dollar should be getting spent a lot. Should we anticipate a breakout to the upside, y'all? And I think I'm going to leave that question for y'all. Maybe I can comment about this in the chat. But, like, should we anticipate a breakout to the upside right here? Or should we, oh, what's that resistance level? We should look for sales now. That is the question that needs to be answered. And that is the theory that we're going to go based off of. And that's going to be the two major plays I'm about to give you all today. Real game, man. No fluff at all. I'm giving you all straight gems. I'm giving you all straight analysis. So about the only thing I ask, if you're still watching this video right now, is that you leave a like, you leave a comment, and you subscribe if you're new to the channel. That helps what get me engaged up. And I feel like sauce like this, it's only a select few people that's really giving me a game like this. This is stuff people usually charge for. And even though I do have my high ticket prices that I charge for, I do want to make sure I still give that to y'all in some way, shape, or form for my people that can't afford it. You feel me? So uh, if it break below this zone, right, where am I looking to hold it? And this is actually going to be one of those official trades I put in my signal chats. Um, and for those that don't know about my signal chats, they are 175 still until um, the end of next Friday. Then they're going back to the standard fee of 175 one time fee. My fault. 175 one time fee. And then after Friday, it's going back to 175 a month. So if you are rocking with the analysis, the trades every single week, my money with these trades and smacking TV, that's going to be crazy. I'll be updating y'all like that. Ah. TP1 already smashed, TP2 already smashed, uh, like you feeling like I'm going dumb dumb on the charts. Uh 2000 pips. All right, so this is gonna be trade idea number one. If it goes to the sales, this is gonna be the nice move that you can look for. So take a picture, screenshot, do whatever you want. Trade number two. I'm gonna keep both of them up at the same time. We're not even about to delete. Trade number two. If it breaks this structure, I'm just gonna anticipate that we're going to get our full retest back to the upside. So it gave us a fake breakout. If it consolidate here and ends up breaking out again, we know. We know what's coming. And best believe, it's crazy. Everybody in their mama going to have settlements up here. I want to have one up here so bad, too. But I understand that's the area that's going to be a liquidity grab, bro. Everybody in their mama is going to have some settlements up there. And that's where you're going to see brokers, market movers, market manipulators. They're going to pump the market to push past that point to go for a new high, higher than this area. Like, that's literally my theory. There is a probability that cool, like I would I would have love for the market just with that entry and just take back off. I also understand that's an area where if I'm thinking the same way, people might not even realize it right now. Like they're probably not even paying attention to where the market is at and where it's headed right now. But y'all kind of like we ahead of the game right now. It's currently what? November 19th. I'm gonna say this video back. We're gonna see like how the market actually played out a month or two from now. And we're gonna look back in the video like dang, Abe was telling us the sauce back in November 19th. But people wasn't start thinking about it or talking about it until once we already at that level. But it's gonna be a lot of sales off of that area, and there's gonna be a lot of people getting their feelings hurt because they're gonna pump the market. And y'all stop losses gonna get hit, and then while y'all setting y'all stop losses there, I'm gonna be taking my sales off of that entry and riding that trade back down for the entire year because I do believe I got a feeling that we might see some uh some downtrend push going into 2024. But not necessarily like a strong downtrend, but more so like a, a nice pullback to set us up for those buys. It's too much going on in the economy right now. Like it needs to be a, a not really a price correction, but some type of like retest or strong pull. Because like even if it's like you take off a buys here and it pumps back down to this support level, that's a nice buy to take back to the upside. So. Sheesh, I just gave y'all some crazy game today on my last one. Recrap, that recrap. So I'm going to end this over here, and I'm going to go ahead and talk to y'all on the camera. Mm -hmm, that's fire. Mm -hmm, that's fire. That's fire. So what we're going to do now, Um, that was crazy how much I just really just gave y'all. I'm going to really release that, too, because like I want to make sure like 
that's some game that I feel like people need to like really pay attention to. Because if you can understand how to soon trade, I remember if you're new to trading and you're watching this video right now, I understand. I'm about to tell you right now. You probably thinking, why would I trade on a hard time frame? I don't want to wait four hours. I want to enter on a one minute. Like, I want to enter on a five minutes faster. Don't do it, bro. I'm trying to tell you, I was there. I thought the one minute was cool, cool. I'm like, bro, I'm on the charts. I just want to trade. Like, I'm excited. You're excited. It's a new thing you're learning how to do. You're trading on a one minute time frame. You think it's about to be fun, all fun and games. And lit. You're trading on the five minute. You think it's all cool, but you don't really have a winning strategy or you don't have like an actual discipline rule to how you're trading just shit. You're just entering out the one minute just to enter out the one minute. And then all of a sudden, now you're catching yourself getting caught in drawdown because you're not really seeing that the overall move on a higher time frame is an uptrend. You're not seeing the overall move on a higher time frame is a downtrend. You can use the higher time frame to set you up for those lower time frame plays. If I understand the higher time frame is a downtrend, bet I can still drop down to the one to five if I want to and just understand where am I at in the market. Am I in an area that might cause a pullback? Cool, I take my buys. But I understand that on this one minute, the next time I look for my sales, it needs to be off of this pullback. And I'm taking my sales and I can know I can feel more comfortable holding those positions longer because what I'm in the trend of the market. So I'm gonna leave you with that, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you are new to the channel. And I'll catch y'all during episode seven. Or actually, I'll catch y'all later on in the week when I update y'all on how the trades played out. Peace out.